for the brutal murder of a nine-year-old boy. October 4th, 2022, a federal judge in North Carolina handed down a life sentence to 27-year-old Antonio Davenport Jr., an 8 trade gangster crip rapper who went by the name Lil Tony. A jury trial would find him guilty of a drive-by shooting, resulting in the brutal murder of a nine-year-old boy. Federal agents in North Carolina knew the 8 trade gangster Crips started in Los Angeles, but they also became the largest Crip set within the central area of North Carolina. Members would be initiated through an 83-second beatdown and celebrate an annual trade day event every August 3rd, the eighth month of the year and third day of the month. These trade day celebrations would be surveilled by law enforcement, resulting in the seizure of firearms and drugs. For approximately 20 years, the eight trades have operated in North Carolina communities as well as within the prison system. Durham, the city Lil Tony is from, has three main territories controlled by the eight trades. The Liberty Street Projects, the McDougal Terrace Projects, and in the neighboring Bragtown, located just outside of Durham, the eight trades had the Oxford Manor Projects. The eight trades held traditional rivalries to not only the Bloods, but the rolling 60s Crips. Specifically within the city of Durham, eight trades' biggest rivalry is with the neighborhood gang known as O Block, not to be confused with the O Block in Chicago. The rivalry stems from 2017 when 30 year old Kyle Fisher, who went by the name O, was gunned down. His hood would take on the name O Block in honor of his death, and they believed the A Trays were responsible for his death. O Block would then align with Southside and Bentwood, two hoods made up of nine Trey gangster bloods, as the war with A Trey continued. It was August 14th, 2019, when a then 24 year old Lil Tony drove his Honda Accord to the South Point Mall in Durham, North Carolina. While inside of the Zoomy store, Tony was approached by a group of nine Trey Bloods who immediately began jumping him inside of the store as one of them recorded it. They'd quickly get him to the ground as a man can be heard repeatedly saying, take his chain. Lil Tony would make a video soon after showing he still had his chain and gave his own version of the events. Y'all niggas still broke his head, Crip, I still got all my money. Four niggas, Crip, I about to knock goddamn Ray Bond ass out. One nigga, Crip, I know his shit leaking. This guy, I hit that bitch with a goddamn skateboard. According to a federal agent, three days after Tony was jumped, a message was sent to an A Trey Crip Instagram group chat in which they said Slime was on live. Slime was identified as 17 year old Arlo Smith, a member of the Southside Nine Trey Bloods, and one of the Bloods that jumped Lil Tony in the mall. Slime was on live with another Blood who took part in the mall attack when one of them said they were in the Foxfire apartments. Recovered text messages would show Lil Tony asked another Crip member if he needed bullets for the Drake, referring to a Draco pistol. The two men would further discuss 9mm and 40 caliber ammunition. Almost two hours later, Tony would go into the May Sports Store in Mabane, North Carolina with his girlfriend and a baby. He'd be seen on camera holding the baby as his girlfriend bought a 50 round box of 9mm bullets and another 50 round box of 40 cal. Federal agents were able to provide the courts with surveillance proof, and the only reason they knew Tony went there was because he was still on a GPS monitor. The next day, Tony's GPS would show how he picked up Deval Magwood, aka Paco, at his apartment. He then drove to pick up Derek Dixon, aka Smack, with both men being confirmed members of the A Trey Crips. It was just after 8 p.m. when GPS coordinates showed Tony was traveling in the direction of Leon Street by the Oak Apartments. The Oaks is known to federal agents as a rival hood and home to some of the bloods who jumped Tony at the mall, specifically Slime. While Tony drove with two other men in the car, one of them was watching Slime on Instagram Live. But what neither gang knew was the feds were also watching the live and screenshotting every crip that joined as they knew the crips were stalking the bloods to kill. At 8.31, Tony's ankle monitor showed he was by the intersection of Leon and Duke Street, 
and seven minutes later, 911 received a call reporting shots fired. And when the horn beep, I look, I, you know, I hurry up and look around, but then I get ready to turn, and I notice I hear gunshots. But I didn't know they were shooting at me. Once I, once I heard another gunshot, it hit my my back window. So my, my kids like, auntie, 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 mommy, go, go. I don't know what happened, but I'm sorry, Ashley. I'm sorry. Danielle Raglan was driving an SUV with their kids, as well as her niece and nephew to go get snow cones. An 11, 10, 9, and 8 year old all sat excited as a one month old baby just came for the ride. Driving down Leon Street, Danielle turned left on a Duke when a burgundy car drove past her and started firing into her vehicle. One of those bullets struck the 8 year old boy, entering and exiting his forearm, leaving a through and through gunshot wound. But the 9 year old boy, the bullet pierced his forehead pushing through his brain before exiting the back of his head. Danielle drove to the Duke Regional Hospital where the nine-year-old boy, identified as Zion Person, was pronounced dead. 22 shell casings were found at the scene, five being nine millimeter and 17 being 40 cal. Surveillance video from a nearby middle school would show the suspect's burgundy sedan traveling at the same time as Tony's GPS coordinates and surveillance from the mall Tony was jumped at would show he had pulled up and left the mall in a burgundy Honda Accord. Back in 2016, Tony was served just under two years after being convicted of burglary, larceny, and speeding to elude arrest. It was during this time incarcerated he became an A-Tray gangster. By 2018, Tony would be listed as a victim in a shooting after his car was shot up with an AK-47, which wounded the back of his head. That same year, his music would start to gather views on YouTube and Worldstar. Just a week before he was attacked in the mall by a rival gang, Tony had been arrested for assaulting a female, not letting her call 911, and threatening to harm her. He'd be released with a GPS ankle monitor, which would later be used by federal prosecutors as the key to securing a conviction against him. Only weeks after the murder was committed, Tony would wind up back in jail on domestic charges and soon received the news he's being federally indicted for murder and racketeering. Arrest warrants would go out for Paco and Smack, the other two shooters that rolled out on the drive-by. Paco would be arrested first on October 9th, and a search of his apartment would recover a box of 40 caliber bullets. The barcode on the box matched the bullets bought by Tony's girlfriend, and Smack would be arrested October 30th to 2019, and found in possession of a Draco, the same weapon he had the night of the drive-by. Agents knew it was the weapon he had because Paco was already cooperating. Paco told agents Tony had a 9mm Glock 26, he had a Springfield XD 40 Cal, and Smack had a Draco. The Glock Tony fired from the driver's seat would be found after his girlfriend was pulled over with the gun still in the car. With an overwhelming amount of evidence against all three men, Smack would give information placing Tony at the scene of the shooting, Paco would fully cooperate, and both would eventually plead guilty, while Tony would take the case to trial. Smack would be sentenced to life, Tony would be sentenced to life plus 10 years, and Paco would be sentenced to 23 years, even after snitching. Paco admitted he was a shooter for the eight trays and claimed he was in the front seat when the drive-by went down, but that he didn't fire because the SUV was on the other side. Tony fired a Glock while he was driving as Smack fired Paco's 40 out of the back window. Paco would still go as far as testifying he would have shot too if he could have. His testimony allowed prosecutors to convict Tony of not only murder, but the additional charges. Paco would explain how he grew up in the Oxford Manor projects, his mother wasn't there, and his father was a paraplegic after being shot, dying only months later. He joined the eight trays in eighth grade and held the rank of a demon, which he said stood for a shooter. Lil Tony had a shot at success, but instead took a shot at an innocent woman's vehicle, mistaking it for a rival gang. His pride was hurt after he was recorded being jumped in a mall, so we planned an act of retaliation, carrying it out and taking the life of a nine-year-old football player whose last memory was filled with fear as he looked in the direction of gunshots before his world went black.